Good vibrations. Okay, so hey everybody, welcome back to the North Carolina Zoo Zoo Classroom. Um, so today's program is going to be about animal symphonies. My name is Megan, and before we get started, I want to go over a few of our rules. So for those of you returning, uh, of course, these you already know because you're pros at this, right? So the first thing is that everybody is muted except for moi. So we want everyone to get to hear all of these cool facts and cool sounds we're going to be hearing today. And so that's just why everybody's muted. So don't worry. But we still want you to guys. We still want you guys to participate and be interactive with us, and we want to hear you hear from you guys. So our chat box. If I ask the question and you have an answer, doesn't matter if it's good, bad, in between, or if you're just throwing out a wild guess. We love to hear your answers, guys. So the chat box is where that's going to go. Now, if you have a question for me about any of our animals we're going to be seeing or anything in general, throw it in to the Q&A box and we will get to that. So yeah, I think that's, is that all my rules? Maybe? That's it. You're good. All right, cool. So again, my name is Megan and I am super excited to talk to you guys about good vibrations today. So that song I played at the beginning, you guys are a little bit young for it probably, but it's the Beach Boys, good vibrations. And today we're going to be talking about sound. So sound comes in all types of ways, right? Have you guys ever been in the ocean or in a wave pool even, right? At some of the theme parks and big old wave comes by, right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty strong. I can stand up, right? But when that wave comes, I get a little bit wobbly. I can feel that wave moving. So yeah, that's in the ocean, not exactly the same. But sound waves are very similar in that they cause movement in the air or in whatever kind of surfaces they, got, they bounce up against. So, like, have you guys ever been in a concert or a movie theater and the speakers get really loud and it's like your, your whole chair? Like, one of the movies I think of that makes my chair shake is like Star Wars or something, right? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, or IMAX theater. Yeah, IMAX oh, theater. Yeah. yeah, be prepared. Um, <laughs> So that's an example of sound waves and how they affect us. So we don't just hear the sounds, we feel the sound in our skin, right? In our bones. So, pretty cool. Um, let's see. Yep. I am going to talk about an animal that personally I really love. Um, and they're really awesome. And you guys might have, uh, if you were here last weekend, you guys might remember hearing about this from Steve's program, but Nikki's gonna, uh, well, no, no, here we go. Nikki has not yet hit the wrong button. <laughs> right, everybody, hold on, hold on. Okay, 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 I got it, I got it now. Let the person make their sound. Oh, 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 wait, I'm pausing. All right, you guys ready? Oh, Are my friends in here ready? Everybody's okay. gotta make their best elephant sound. Okay, everybody. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I think that was impressive. Good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> so that's actually not the most common sound. Cute. All right. Oh, <laughs> gotta listen a little closer. I feel like it doesn't want to work for me today. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so this is that really low rumble. So beneath all the bird sounds and frog and nature calls, right? You hear that really low rumble. And that's actually one of the most common sounds that the elephants make. Which is really weird, right? We don't think of elephants like it's almost like a tummy rumble, right? But how do you think they make that noise? You guys think? So that in the chat box. Any ideas on how they make the rumble noise? Is it really their tummy? Uh, it's almost like larynx, the drum. Ooh. Yeah, those are great answers, guys. Yeah. Ultimately, it's 
stomping. Stomping with your neck. So stomping is really, really interesting, right? And just really quick, one thing about that. These guys are massive. They're huge, but they can be so gentle, right? And when they walk, you can barely hear it. So, but anyway, so you're right. The larynx is how they make those low rumbles. And that's our voice box. That weird hard part in here, right? So we'll push air through there and the sound waves as they move through the voice box, make that sound. Yes. Natalie was wondering not only how do they make that sound, but why do oh. elephants make that sound? Why do you think? Right? Why do you think elephants need to make sounds and communicate? Any ideas? So we'll talk to each other? Yeah, to talk to each other, right? That's yeah. So now most of the time the danger signal or the excited signal would be that really loud, woo, right? So that would be the trumpet. And that is actually made by um, pushing air through the trunk. So you're not wrong. They do use that trunk for more than just holding water, right? And moving things. They make that trumpeting noise. But the rumbles are made through the lyrics and they are made like it was mentioned, to communicate with each other. So these guys can travel several miles in one day. Okay, so, and these low rumbles, how do you think they hear those really, really low rumbles? I could barely hear it. Mm -hmm. Their ears. Their ears? Yeah, okay, pretty good. If they're close by, maybe, right? So this is the skeleton of an elephant's foot. And this is a footprint from one of our elephants, Mr. Cesar. So what do you guys think is missing? Can you guys see this? I got this. It's a really big footprint, right? He's standing on his tiptoes. So what else is he walking on besides the symptoms? The back part is made of fat. Yeah. yeah. Somebody was listening yeah. last week. <laughs> Good job, guys. So the back part is made of fat. It's a big acoustic fat pad. So acoustic is a fancy word, kind of for noise, right? It picks up noise. Yeah, a lot of fat pads in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Good job, everybody. So they do. They can actually feel the vibrations from the rumbles and the even lower frequency sounds that, you know, if I were walking around Africa, I wouldn't be able to hear those low rumbles, but they can hear them for about five miles away, which is pretty impressive, especially since these guys are so, uh, so dependent on their families and they live in big herds usually. So yeah. And I think, yes ma'am, Cynthia. So we have another question about, you say it's acoustic fat. So what does acoustic mean? So is a question. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I got this. Okay. It's a good one. It's sound. It, that's not it, like an acoustic guitar. Yeah, acoustic guitar. So it's, it's yeah, very it's not, oh, it's amplified sound. It's not amplified. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's all right. kind of sound that's not plugged in, I guess. Right. Can acoustic say, guitar. Okay, um, what else? If you hear somebody say, wow, this room has really good acoustics, it's, it helps with the vibrations and the sound waves. It supports music and singing and sound. I hope that kind of helps. <laughs> so acoustic fat would help absorb sounds. Right, acoustic fat helps absorb those low frequency rumbles from really far away. And it processes to like communication and different voices in that elephant's head that's receiving those waves. Good vibration. Yeah, good vibration. <laughs> so, what he says is related to sound or just sense of hearing? Related to sound or sense of hearing. Yeah, we were, we were beating around those bushes. <laughs> All right, cool. So, I think that covers my elephant talk. So, I'm going to work on getting our first friend out while Nikki plays you a sound. See if you can guess what this animal is. struggling 
Golden with gloves. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yes, yes. See the vibrations in the water. Yeah, so if you guys are looking, you can see the water actually moving and vibrating. And that's those sound waves coming from that <laughs> alligator. I can't focus on the shaking hand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You saw a little bit, right? Maybe. So that's, that's those sound waves coming from that alligator and rippling and vibrating the water around him. Why do you guys think the adult male alligator would want to make that kind of a call? What do you think? Because he is a mating. Nice. Perfect. What size is this, Charles? Yeah, good job, guys. Yeah, yeah, so that is a mating call. Right? Kind of like the frogs have a really loud and different mating calls, right? So the alligators have that too. And one other really cool thing about alligators, another way that they use vibrations, they get really good vibrations and get really excited when they feel something moving in the water. All right, we're gonna try this. Yeah, don't get upset with me. No, maybe not. Do you have a light? Yep. Oh, I'll have one there. Yay! All right, so if you guys look at his bottom jaw, <laughs> you can kind of see it looks almost like a bunch of little dots. And those are actually really cool holes that are used to pick up vibrations in the water. So when they feel their food moving around, all they have to do is sit and wait. And they know it's coming. Right? So it's just another example of how these animals use vibrations. Cool. All right. So, any questions about Cyrus or any of his alligator relatives? You're doing so good. Oh, yes, Cynthia. Emma's curious if it's a boy or a girl. Cyrus, I believe, is a male. I think. I think Bayou was, was a female. Is it? Or, I didn't know. I don't know. <laughs> because I was calling him both boys. You know? I was corrected the other day. So. Yes, Cynthia. <laughs> Maybe somebody else can answer. There we go. We got a team of yeah. smart people helping us. That <laughs> he, he said that that's a female. Is that? Oh, you're a female. I'm so sorry. To I'm you. 
<laughs> so we have a lot of curiosity about Cyprus. Um, first of all, why is uh, Cyprus not blinking? And is there a history? When and how did we get them? So, Nikki, can you better explain the blinking? Because I'm not exactly. Well, the, that's kind of like the, um, the, the, the hunt, the hide and hunt. So yeah. They look like a lot of people come to our zoo. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me. And they keep see our alligators and they don't think they're alive. Yeah. Because they just sit and look still. And like I said, they're using those vibrations and waiting for sound and noises to come to them so they can eat their food. So they're just sitting and wait hunters. And so not moving, not blinking helps in that effect so that nothing can see them and they blend in. And that way they can grab their food. So that's why they're not, they're not blinking. Yeah. <laughs> but they do but they, have they, a they nictating. Do they though. do, yep, yeah. They can blink. They absolutely can. But to keep that, that, that not alive alligator look. <laughs> yeah, they want to be statues. Yeah, exactly. We learn. <laughs> You're doing pretty good at it. Yeah. Yes, she is. <laughs> right, and what was the other part of that question? When and where did you get when Cypress? When and where did we get it? Okay, so Cypress and Bayou um, were housemates, and they came from someone who I believe owned them as pets and couldn't quite take care of them properly uh, once they realized that these guys or a little bit more than they could handle. Um, they decided to rehome and reach out, and they came here and became program animals, and they have grown so much since they've been here. Yeah. So thankfully, these guys are a success story, and they are getting big enough so that they're going to be hopefully getting out into the big world soon. <laughs> well, we're not releasing that. We're not, not in the wild. <laughs> into the, into the bigger world. Not the program animal world. <laughs> That's what we're seeing. Yeah. So what do they eat? Jeremy's so curious. Mm, that's a great question. So these guys would probably eat mice um, and other small rodents and maybe a little bit of fish every now and then. Um, anything swimming by. Yeah, any, anything swimming by. So, yeah. Does he have nails? Like Does fingernails? Have, ooh, question. Right. Oh, you want to be cool with this? You just show off your pretty oh, little toes. Oh, I see. Did he get his manicure, pedicure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good right there. Yeah. Cool stuff, right, guys? So, yeah, we're being really chill right now. So awesome. I'm impressed. You're awesome. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you are the alligator whisperer. We've decided. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> so the key with these guys is. You know, of course, making them feel comfortable, and if they decide they're not comfortable, it goes right back into his house. Mm -hmm. All right, so everyone say bye, Cypress. Bye, Cypress. Bye. <laughs> you rock. Good job, bud. Thank you. <laughs> there was a lot of, oh, he's cute. Yes. <laughs> so cute. So cute. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> no, cute. I had another Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. So. Let's see, what's next? What about, oh, that's right, we have a sound bite. Sorry, Nikki, you were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what about Any guesses as to what that is? <laughs> A little bit tricky there. Somebody said a snake, rattlesnake. Oh, what's a rattlesnake? Okay, that wasn't tricky at all. Good job, guys. All right, so this is a, quite an impressive specimen here. All right, so I'm trying to hold them so that you guys can see it through the case. This is a skeleton of a rattlesnake. Now, the rattle is not even on the skeleton. So it's actually this part of the skin and scales that's modified. So it's not even connected off the end of the skeleton. But that is super cool, right, guys? <laughs> and how do you guys think the rattle works? Any guesses? Is it maybe like a baby rattle? What do you think? Uh, they run together, they vibrate. You're shaking your tail. Yeah. 
Good job, guys. So rub together, vibrate, shaking their tail. Yeah. So remember, their tail, not quite connected to the, to the scales, right? The scales are off the end of it. But this is an actual rattle from a rattlesnake. And they're hollow, very lightweight, just scales, right? I know this is not focusing on me, I'm sorry. I was gonna see. Can you guys hear that? It's a very faint rattle, but even just me touching it, they're making that noise. So yeah, there's nothing loose rattling around in there. It's not a baby rattle. It's just the really thick modified scales rubbing against each other. And the faster that snake shakes its toe, the faster it's going to rattle and make that noise. So, you guys ready for my next friend? <laughs> I am. I'm so excited. You bring out a rattlesnake? <laughs> <laughs> Boy. <laughs> so, I am not trained to handle any type of venomous animal. And even if I were, I would have backup and it would be a very detailed process of probably not me doing it. <laughs> or me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that brave, guys. Or, yeah. We'll go with that. Hi, friend. Okay. Sorry for the awkward delay, guys. Okay, she's getting it out. Um, I'll talk about that. Okay, cool. Actually, I wanted to know, where's that rattlesnake though? Or the rattle though? Right here. I don't really think that. That's not a joke. Yeah. If you can show it there, then I know. A lot of people are mentioning that um, so many ribs, so many bones. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they are. They're all bones and ribs. I just want to get a little bit close up. So each, there's like little sections. Kind of hard to see. I don't know why it's not focusing. Yeah, right focus with me. There, there, there we go. Good. Yeah, and we right got to put something behind it. So yeah, so each of those sections is just a modified scale. Can you see those? And so as they get, every time they shed their skin, they add a new one of those little sections on. And so, and they are, they're just those sections hitting each other. That's all it is that makes that rattle. Can you hear it? Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. So I think it's pretty cool. And a lot of people used to say that rattle, you can tell a rattlesnake by his age, by how long the rattle is, but that's not true because these break off every once in a while too. So that's why we have, that's all the pieces we have in this little thing, the little <laughs> cup, used to be one rattle. So they do fall apart, even on, on, a, on a live snake. How's he doing? Well, he's, like, he's trying to get in the corner of his bag. There you go, buddy. Okay. He's like, well, I'm There we go. All right. So for those of you return classroom members, you may remember Mr. Griffin. Griffin is pretty awesome. I have to say, he's mm -hmm. definitely Oh yeah, forgot about my name tag. Sorry guys. No risk to the beautiful animal we have here. All right, so this is Griffin. He is a northern pine snake. So these guys, everybody say hi. Hi Griffin. Hi Griff. Oh, I wish you could hear us because I just baby talk them all the time. But he doesn't have any ears. I know I see you, but I, you need to pay attention to them. <laughs> right. So he does not have any ears. So how does he know what's going on around him? What do you think? They're really showing off that he doesn't have ears. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He can't hear you. What are you saying? Scales, tongue. Scales, tongue. Smell. Feeling. Oh. Vibration. Good go. job, guys. You guys are getting there. So all of those things are great answers. And not wrong, why are you going down? <laughs> You're going confused as to your um, directional movement here, friend. Okay, <laughs> there we go. I'm just like, okay. But anyway, so he's kind of doing what he wants. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so feeling and vibration. That's how these guys communicate. That's how they know what's around them, right? So in our ears, we actually have bone inside of our ears. Pretty cool, right? But you didn't know that. 
So these guys, their ear bone, or what should be their ear bone, is actually connected to their lower jaw. So they use that ear bone that picks up the vibrations, and they go, <laughs> okay, I, he really, I, I love you too, friend. I know you can't hear me, but I do. Um, but he can pick up those vibrations in his jaw. Yeah, he's just making himself comfy, guys. Um, <laughs> can pick up those vibrations in his jaw and throughout his whole body, really, because I would appreciate not because he has really thick muscles, right? Muscles and scale, and they're all very sensitive. And now you're going back to the camera. <laughs> you are a trip. Uh, so he can pick up all of those vibrations. So how do you wake up a snake? What do you think? If you're walking through the woods and you're like, oh, I really don't want to run into any snakes. I don't want to disturb any naps or any meal times. How do you wake up a snake, guys? You start yelling. Pulling his tail, rubbing it. Pulling his tail and rubbing it. Cool. Not advisable, friends. Not advisable at all. Someone said yell, screaming. Well, now, how would they hear us yell and scream? Remember, we just thought they don't have ears. But that's a pretty good guess because it moves along with the sound waves and the vibrations. So one of the ways that we kind of suggest to wake up snakes or let them know you're on your way is to kind of move the ground. Whether you're rustling leaves or just making heavy, thick steps, the last thing you want to do is creep through the woods, right? Because then you, you could totally wake this guy up and he'd be like, oh my goodness, I'm terrified. And then you might get bit because they're scared, right? But if we let them know that we're coming through the woods by all of these vibrations and and loud movements, and I say loud movements, it's kind of contradicting, right? It's kind of both ways, because we're being loud, we can hear ourselves being loud and rustling the leaves, but we're moving to make those vibrations, and I do not know what you are doing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and we want to talk about um, what's so special about this Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's hard to go. He's being very active. <laughs> Easy to get distracted. Yes. Yeah, so well, uh, <laughs> Uriah and Leah are just dying to know how long he is. So they've been waiting for an answer. Oh, but I'm I didn't want to interrupt the acrobatics of Griffin. This is real acrobatics. So he was almost stretched out there for a minute. Um, what would you say, Nikki, is his uh, length? Right? Five. Probably just five. pushing four and five. Yeah. He's, he's about four and five, but. And he is extremely curious. You're not settling down at all today, are you? <laughs> I know. So, northern pine snakes, the reason I wanted to show you guys Griffin today instead of someone like Scoots or Slinky or even Freckles is because they have a really cool adaptation that makes them go to hiss really loud. So, a few classrooms back, um, when I was trying to get him out to do a program and to show you guys, he let out a hiss so loud that you guys could hear him, which was quite impressive because not all snakes can do that. But he actually has a special flap of what's called cartilage. It's kind of like the stuff that's, that makes up our ears. Oh, that's funny. It's a great um, shot. That is funny, buddy. So he has a flap of cartilage kind of in his throat, but in his trachea, so that when he pushes enough air, through his trachea, actually makes that really loud hissing because the sound waves and the air bounces and hits, blah, blah, the air hits the cartilage flap and it bounces and makes those sound waves that we can hear. He can't hear himself hissing, but he's just pushing extra air through so that you know, he knows that we know that he's a little bit unhappy right now. <laughs> so yeah, is there anything else about snakes? Yes, Cynthia. Sarah Lynn is curious if they are poisonous, and we know she might be referring to if it's venomous. Right. So Talk Sarah Lynn, these guys are not venomous. So as I was saying, uh, we were joking earlier about uh, Nikki said, "Oh, you're bringing out a rattlesnake," and I said, "No, I am not quite trained on that." not quite comfortable with that um, and I don't think even people who are trained are completely comfortable because you always have to be on your toes but Griffin here 
he's he's uh, chilling out now. But he's non-venomous. Um, and yeah. He's, he's chill now. I don't know. He's crawling all over me now. He's now he's good. <laughs> are they native around here? These guys are native, but you probably wouldn't run across them just in the woods regular because they really like to hide under the ground. Well, it's in their name. They're yeah. pine snakes. They're pine snakes. So they hide under all the pine needles and leaves and kind of underground. So yeah. in the, the sand hills area. You'll find sand hills, if that's right. Look for the pine trees and you will find the pine snake. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful, Annie, guys. Oh, I just love you so much. I know you can't hear me, but I love you. Okay. One more snake question. Yes, so Aaron would like to know, how do they catch their prey? Aaron, so these guys, now if you're talking about pine snakes, uh, like I said, they kind of live more underground and so they actually burrow and make tunnels. So she showed you that great nose. Yeah, too. oh yeah. So you guys got to look at his nose really close, but I'll see if I can do it again. Hmm. He has a really special scale on his nose that helps him dig and burrow into the ground. Um, but when he's in his tunnel, that's his home, right? So what happens if maybe a mouse says, oh, this is a fun looking tunnel. I'm gonna go digging around and, you know, hanging out in this tunnel, right? What's gonna happen to that mouse if he's in Griffin's tunnel? Right? He's gonna probably become dinner. Also stay. Yep. <laughs> that yep, pretty much. But these guys, so they're not exactly constrictors. So they actually use their big, big bodies to kind of ram the prey up against the side of their tunnels. It's really interesting, but pretty cool. Great Griff, you good? Yeah? Okay. I would just hang out with you all day long, I know. Right. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Okay. Is there any more snake questions I can answer while she's yes. well, they're they're all right. putting them away? Griffin? What do they eat? Okay, what do they eat? What do you guys think? Do they eat plants? Or do they eat meat? Or do they eat both? Do you guys know? We got a lot of mice. A lot of mice, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like she said, those mice go in those tunnels, and that is their snack coming from the table. He is, he's not having it. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's like working with animals and kids. He's you know, just like, like oh, he started going in and then he stopped and he turned around and came out. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming out again. Oh. <laughs> Your <laughs> antics are on video. <laughs> Good teamwork, guys. Good teamwork. Wow. We loved you guys. So we have the, what do they eat? So lots of mice. They eat pretty much any small animal. Then we had a few of those in there, Yep, absolutely. So lots of different things. All right, Griffin, go back to sleep. He's like, yeah, just got comfortable. Yeah. He's a fun snake because he, he likes to move around a lot, but then he gets comfy and he's just like, okay. <laughs> I think he fell asleep in my hands one time doing a program and we startled each other when I woke him up. <laughs> Putting his <laughs> way to go. Again, how do you make a snake wake up, right? You just, hey, get in, get in there. <laughs> put him in there. Put him in the pillowcase. <laughs> yeah, put him in their pillowcase. All right, so I do have a little bulb. Do you want to do the next one next? Yes. All right, what is the next one? <laughs> the little one. That one, okay. All okay. right. Let's see if you guys can figure out what this is. Anybody guesses? Uh, Aaron said insect. Ooh, nice. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't guess that, my friend. We guessed it as my new bug. 
Jack said frog. Emma said a mouse. Nice. There's a couple of crickets. Man, you guys are good at this. Grasshopper, alligator, lizard, cicada. We need to get you bigger gloves. <laughs> <laughs> My hands are sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I am really on that struggle today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all right. Oh, there we go. You got it. Yay. <laughs> All right, who wants to be my friend? Which I one? do. Me. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> OK, so this is one more friend in there, so I'm going to close it. Ow, ow. OK, we're good. But this is bum, 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 the friend who makes that funny noise. This is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. So it looks pretty funny, right? How do you guys think he makes noise? Oh, it's okay, bud. Hissing? Ow. Oh, it's scale? Ooh. Scale hold? Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I like tail holes. What? Oh, okay. Another guess is scale. Yeah, you guys are really good at this. So he has that really fun exoskeleton, um, kind of like Steve was talking about last week. But these little spots, somebody said tail holes, and you're completely correct. So those are called sphericals, and he actually is able to push air through those holes. And I know it's trying to focus. Sorry, guys. Uh, but he's able to push air through those holes. And when that air um, bounces off of those holes and kind of hits that hard surface of his exoskeleton, it makes that really loud hissing sound. Why do you guys think he hisses? Couple protections. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Startle predators, communication. Nice. Are you gonna play it? I tried oh. to wait. I already did, didn't I? No, oh. the other one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to play it? All right, everybody. All right. If you're wearing you're headphones, ready. be ready. Oh, I gotta find it. Oh, Here okay. Go. Here you go. Okay, got it. Oh. Any guesses what that was? I bet you ten dollars you will never guess unless you've heard it before. Do they have any guesses, Brittany? Guesses are terrifying. It's like a cat. Yeah. It's like a cat, yeah. Yeah. So that was actually um, the sound of a bullfrog um, being eaten by a snake. So sorry for frog friends, um, but. Yeah, so it's for self-protection, right? So they want to kind of warn predators. If somebody comes up to this friend and says, hey, you look lunchy, and he says, Psst, I'm betting they're going to back up. That predator is going to say, wait a minute, what was that? And kind of run away. Or they make that horrifying noise. Yeah, <laughs> if this guy made that horrifying noise, I would probably run away right now. Um, so yeah. That is Madagascar hissing cockroach, and their really cool use of vibrations and sound waves. They send out vibrations, not always good vibrations, because sometimes they're like, hey, get away, right? But cool. Thanks for helping, Brian. You're very well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you gotta get off the fingers. I almost really like you today. I know. <laughs> That's every day. Okay. He's Probably onto my hand more. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I really like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next, oh my goodness, the next animal that makes <laughs> noises. Sorry, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> that glove broke three different places when I was trying to take it off. Um, so the next animal that makes some really cool noises and sounds and uses all sorts of good vibrations is my friend and their noggin looks like this 
Any guesses? Any guesses what this animal might be? Polar bear, baboon. So it's kind of a short head, right? So that nose is really short. <laughs> so you're on the right track with tiger, but this is a small cat. <laughs> so this is a small cat. So, so this is a cougar. And they are still in the small cat classification, even though they can get up to two, how much, 200? Oh yeah. Yeah. 180, 200, yeah. Yeah, about 200 pounds. Um, my kitten that's at home right now, she just started weighing two pounds. So she's on the same classification as this cougar. This is crazy, right? Why do you think they would be in that same classification? They could do something really unique. It's a big cat. Big cats can't do it. So what can small cats and house cats do that's really cool? They can fit in the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, somebody said sleep. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will say that's common for all oh, size cats. So they get Yeah, they get small cats. I actually said her. There you go. Hurry! Nice. Good job, guys. Yeah. So small cats, even the cougars. Remember, they're still small cats. They're the smallest big cat, biggest small cat. Hold on, I got this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they can hurt. So really cool. This is going to be a weird picture, guys. I'm sorry, but I just wanted to show you guys. Um, a little bit about the anatomy and how our sounds are made and how we use air coming from our trachea or windpipe and we push it up through our voice box um, and then it bounces off that hyoid bone on its way out, right? So that hyoid bone um, in humans, it's very hard. It's, a, it's completely bone. So if you guys have ever broken a bone or if you've ever seen a bone in real life, you know it's, it's pretty firm, right? It's pretty hard to break. Um, so, oh, and the other thing I was gonna say is this voice box, you see those red parts? That's kind of showing you guys muscle. So have you, have, have you ever heard the saying, oh wow, she's got really good pipes, she can really sing. You guys ever heard that? So basically, just got a lot of extra muscles and they really tone their muscles. They have muscles all over our body, right? Our smile muscles, our biceps, right? We even have muscles inside of our throat. So if we have really good voice muscles, we can maybe make some more sounds or louder sounds. So in the small cats, the hyoid bone is, look for it, the hyoid bone is mostly Bone. So, doesn't it really have any softness to it? It's not quite as firm as our hyoid, but it's definitely hard. So, and a really cool thing about the purring, have you ever noticed when a kitten or a cat's trying to purr, it almost seems like they're not breathing, right? Everybody, really quick, I want you guys to try to whistle or talk or make sound while you're breathing in and out, okay? I'm going to do it with you. Uh, 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 I can't do it on the inhale. Uh, uh, it's on the inhale. I, I can't do it, right? I gotta bring that air back in. Cats can. The small cats purr on inhalation and exhalation. So that's those airs that that's the air coming in and out of their windpipe is able to bounce and ricochet off of the hyoid and make sound. Pretty cool, right? All right, so what about big cats? I can't even champion her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about big cats? Why can't they purr? It has to do with the hyoid. So this is an example of a lion skull. So their hyoid bone it's not really bone. So everybody kind of feel your ear up here. It's kind of squishy, but it's a little bit tough, right? It stays in place. It doesn't jiggle. 
stays in place, but it's squishy. That's actually cartilage. So that is the same thing that makes up Griffin's little flat in his throat that helps him hiss really loud. And it's also mostly what the lion and tiger, what their hyoids are made of is cartilage. So it's soft. Right, so how do you think that affects their sound making? Because remember, the hyoid bone in the small cats was hard, so they could make that more sound of the high pitched meow and then the purring all the time. So that's soft hyoid. You got anything going over there, Renee? Yeah. All right, so that's, yes. Cynthia? So hyper, hi, Harper is just asking so lions do not purr? They do not. So they, for a while, there was kind of a, wait a minute, that sounds like a purr coming from that lion. But when they listened really close, the lion wasn't doing it. Inhale and exhale. So it's different. It's not a purr. But they can do something that small cats can't. What is that? Yeah, good job. So they roar. A lion's roar can be heard up to five miles away. I can vouch for that. It's terrifying. Well, it's really cool, but it's also a little bit creepy. <laughs> um, but it's because their hyoid, like I said, is cartilage. So it kind of, it doesn't really stop the air. It doesn't give as much friction or bounce off as the hard hyoid does. So yeah, and then one more thing I want to talk about, bees. Not these. B A. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna see if they can see if you guys can figure out what our next animal is by their call. Just to make Wendy happy. The bird. Frog. Great guesses, guys. So, it is our friend. I don't want to be his backdrop. I'm sorry. Um, so, this is a bat, right? So, does anybody know what the fancy scientific word is for how bats uh, use sound? Right? Maybe to find food and whatnot. Can you guess it? Yes. What a few echolocations. Nice. Way to go, guys. You guys know everything. Why don't you come here? You don't need to hear me. <laughs> um, I'm so glad you didn't come, though. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, echolocation, guys. And we have a lot more examples of animals that use echolocation. Right? Can anybody think of any? While you guys are thinking, I will say that you've heard different types of clicks and sounds in that clip, right? So the short clips, the that is more of searching for things. But when it got really fast and repetitive, which I can't make that sound, um, <laughs> that's actually what you know what is saying, hey, there's something there, I've got to go get it, right? So they they can identify where things are. So um, two people said dolphins and one said whales. Yes. Nice. Great job, guys. So dolphins and whales are great examples of animals that use echolocation. Now, what about people? Do humans use echolocation? A couple of no's. I don't think I could. Yes. What about people who are visually impaired? Right? So, have you ever heard about um, if one sense is a little bit weaker, then another sense may be heightened or in, in, increased? So, people uh, who maybe can't see as well, or even if they're completely blind. They can use their ears. They have a much better sense of hearing than I do, of course. I can barely hear 
if you ever there, I mean. Um, <laughs> but they use those same types of clicks, just like you heard on the back clip. And they can sense and feel, and they can pick up those sound waves coming back to them after they've bounced off of a nearby surface. So I think that's a pretty cool example of how humans have learned from animals, how we learn to use, you know, what, what we have available to us, what our strongest senses and strengths are. Um, so yeah, using those good vibrations to kind of pick up, hey, there's something over there, right? So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, but anyways, if you guys have any more questions and uh, yeah, today we learned about sound and good vibrations and how important sound is to all of these animals. Even animals like Griffin without ears, right? Mm -hmm. Those sound waves travel through all sorts of surfaces, whether it's dirt with the elephant picking up the sound in their feet, or Griffin picking up the sound or the sound waves in his jaw, right, and feeling that vibration. So yeah. Pretty cool, guys, and thanks for joining us. And what else? any questions? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, guys, and please come back next week for Cynthia's giraffe. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but we had a last-minute question about that bat. Was that bat alive? So that bat it was yeah. at one time alive. Um, but one of our vampire bats, you know, the prison. Oh, was it? I didn't realize that. So he was actually, uh, Nikki just said he's one of our vampire bats that we had had at our zoo. Nick. Passed away from old age. So passed away from old age. But you can see all the detail very clearly there. Pretty cool, right, guys? I like it. It's his way of continuing to live on. Yeah, he's living on through education and through you guys and helping teach you guys about echolocation. <laughs> so remember guys, keep up those good vibrations at home and everywhere you go. Everybody can feel them. We all get the senses and the sound waves, right? So good vibrations and thanks for joining guys. Bye, see you next week.